I'm not even going to, like, I'm not going to trick you into thinking we have any chance today, okay? Because as soon as I see three regions, um, there's no chance. There's just no chance for me. Uh, which one is Hoenn? Is Hoenn gold, silver? Gen 3. Ruby, sapphire, emerald. A little bit out of my wheelhouse, to be honest with you. Um, monotype and Paldia slash Kitakami. We went through this. This is like Gen 9 or something like that. Um, okay, a flying monotype Pokemon. Show me Pidgeot. A normal monotype Pokemon. Show me Rattata. A fighting monotype Pokemon. Show me Machop. Uh, now this is where things get interesting. <laughs> flying monotype. That shouldn't be that hard. I think. Like, uh, think of things that fly, bro. Flying type. Aerodactyl's got a little rock. Legendary birds have their elements. Flying. Best flying DPS, probably Rayquaza, but Rayquaza must have a, a dragon element to it as well. Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. So I'm, I'm putting myself in the mindset. This is Grudon and Kyogre. None of which are in these categories, but I can at least, like, I didn't play the games. I could try to think of, like, maybe Pokemon Go stuff that came out around this era. Like a fighting type from, okay, I, I think I have a guess. Uh, it's the du Hariyama. And a normal, the problem is you don't even look at the normal types when you catch them. So I'm thinking it could be like a Bidoof. Okay, that's fine. Or what's the, the dude with the, what's the platypus dude? Pat Rat? Okay, I mean, these are, for me, these are good fucking guesses, man. To be coming out of nowhere with these is crazy. Because, like, I, don't, I can't even get started on this. I don't even know where we would go on this. How about some birds? Any chance that um, Hoenn is where they introduced, like, shall we say, a Skarmory? There's lots of birds in the world, man. There's lots of birds in the world of Pokemon. Normal Hoenn. Got your pat rats. Sometimes like the, the little caterpillars and stuff are, I guess they're like bug type. Does bug type even exist anymore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it exists. Does it exist? Did they get rid of bug type? Was there ever a bug type? It's, all, it's always like little ferrets and stuff like that. Little squirrels. Pat Rat, Bidoof. <laughs> Two more guesses. Maybe flying monotype should be like easy enough, man. Is there any chance Pidgey is I think Pidgey's got like a normal type in there too. That's unfortunate. Uh, this is going to be my best guess, man. Uh, what about uh, uh, <laughs> flying type? Tolge Kiss is a big flyer, but that's a fairy type. Is it possible that Tolge Kiss came to exist in Hoenn? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say it came later. Because it's... Just a balloon. A balloon! Like, for example, a Drifloon? Okay. Honestly, I'm still kind of proud of myself for how we did today. We came up with some reasonable guesses. We didn't just guess Pikachu six times. And we got three on the board. For me on PokeGo, or uh, PokeDoku, that is like a, that's a win. Swablu! Swablu's normal? 
Or was that flying? This is r slash Pokemon's picks. We got this. We got this. I see. This is like us curated picks. This is Gen 3 normal flying. Ah, okay. Uh, fair enough. I do. Swablu, you got to catch, right? Because uh, it's... At, at, at a time, it was one of the best Pokemon in the Great League. Its power could stay under 1,500 while still being a very good defensive anchor for your team. I, I always hit the Swablus with a pineapple every time I see them. Taillow, I also... I was thinking of birds, but I didn't think of this bird. But in my defense, there's a lot of birds. This is just an animal. Flamingo. They started just in including animals. I guess they took a, a letter out of the name. <laughs> Flamigo. I guess they did have a seal in Gen 1. Fair enough. I'm stoked I got Hariyama, though. I felt like I was part of the, part of the group. How about framed? Okay, this is some DC Universe looking shit, without a doubt. This has a, a DC Universe sort of vibe to it immediately. I'm going to say that this is um, Batman versus Superman, the dawn of justice. Maybe this is, wait, is this Reign of Fire? I know this, it, the, the cinematography looks way better than like, the camera quality looks way better than, they don't even have it in here, than a movie from the early 2000s, but is this The Dark Knight Rises? Is this, he's escaped from the prison? This is the Maze Runner. I knew it. I have seen the Maze Runner on, uh, on an airplane. What'd you think of it? I thought it was not very good, but also I was like 27 when I saw it. So I also recognized that I was not really part of the target audience, which is also fine. It's not like I put on the Maze Runner and I was like, I bet this is going to be awesome. I put it on and I was like, let's see. Sometimes it's just nice to see a, a movie with a cool premise, right? You know, I know I could watch like an 8 out of 10 drama that's just like an understated period piece or something like that. But let's, this, this is, it's an ever-transforming maze in a post-apocalyptic society with a bit of a mystery. Let's see. Let's give it a chance. Why does Factal take so long to load, man? I was in the target audience. I thought it was, I thought it was amazing. Well, that's, you know, I, I, I completely understand. It's not like my ass didn't go see the Chronicles of Riddick in theaters and go, whoa. I was losing it, though, in the Discord when people were talking about Lethal Company and someone, you might be watching. It's not an insult, I swear. It's, it's more like, wow, I'm old. Because, like, when you're young, your life moves faster. You, you go through phases, like, so rapidly. But someone said, I wish that I was in the same place I was a few years ago with Among Us where I could really dedicate some time to it. And I was like, Among Us? That shit came out three weeks ago. How much has your life changed in three weeks? And then you look at a January 1984 and you're like, oh, <laughs> it's been 50 years. Leading cement manufacturers worldwide in 2021 based on revenue? Okay, we will not be doing that. <laughs> I just, I, there's no point in me doing it because I, what do I know about the world production of cement? Dock it. Hello, hello, Apollo. Are you good for, uh, hey, by the way, stick around for some dolls, Apollo, but are you good for Jackbox? I'm ready for Jackbox in two and a half hours, two hours and 20 minutes. See, now this is a good um, dull. It is nine questions of trivia. Some of them are cultural. Uh, there is one movie and one music and one television every day, but there's also three sports ones every day. Now your chat is going to freak out because it's made by Barstool. So what you're going to do is not tell them. 
that's, it's been working out for me up to this point. It's true that it is called the Daily Dozen and there are only nine questions. I don't know why that is, but... Known by a Lights Out nickname and celebration, this Chargers outside linebacker led the league in sacks in only a second. That's Sean Merriman, dude! Finally, my mid 2000s San Diego Charger knowledge came in clutch. I can't believe it. Philip Rivers, Ladanian Tomlinson, Sean Merriman, Antonio Gates. Ask me and ask me anything about those four players as long as it's what position did they play for what team? What Eastern Conference team were the Celtics playing against on NBA opening night 2017 when Gordon Hayward fractured his tibia less than 10 minutes into his Celtics debut? That, that's rough. Kind of the Aaron Rodgers of the NBA. I remember seeing clips of it on Twitter. Um, I'm going to say that they put the Celtics against the Knicks on opening night because it's a classic rivalry in the East. Fair enough. What current American League Central franchise was previously known as the Washington Senators slash Nationals from 1901 to 1960 before relocating? Texas Rangers. Okay, fair enough. It's the Expos? Oh, it was like a, it was a non-trick trick question. The Expo, the, the Nationals went to Montreal, who then went to Washington again. Oh, never mind. It was the Twins. All right, fair enough. Turns out it's not. It's just a question. As, at the peak of Corcovodo Mountain, Christ the Redeemer is in what country? It's every uh, sports question is like, how many chicken tenders did J.J. Reddick eat? at lunch uh, on St. Patrick's Day when he was at Duke in 2007. And then every geography question is like, name a country that starts with B. Brazil. Okay, this, Apollo, this might not be for you. This is like my personal favorite trivia category, celebrity mashup. That's Keanu Reeves mixed with Winona, Winona Ryder. That's a, a pretty easy one, to be honest with you. I'm telling you, we, we try to do frame one every day. We did get one wrong, but that's because Reese Witherspoon and Elizabeth Banks have a very similar skull. With an eats, drinks, scenic view slogan, this sports bar chain is known for its wilderness lodge and waitresses in red plaid tops. I believe this restaurant is called Twin Peaks. It's also like Irish Hooters, right? On what cable channel did Key and Peele originally air? Comedy Central. 29 years old. This act, I deal, Guiga, look away. This actress has racked up four Oscar nominations for Atonement, Brooklyn, Lady Bird, Little Women. Who is Saoirse Ronan? This famous hip hop group, No Sleep Till Brooklyn. Okay, I mean, this is like, that was literally on the rides today, boys. We'll take eight today. NBA question kind of tough. Bro, Barstool fans are not beating the allegations. That's seven, not eight. Whatever. <laughs> Hardest question. Name uh, one of the greatest actresses currently working today. They said, 63% of people said, I don't know. Eighty-two percent on music. I don't even remember the music question. That's how easy that was. I thought we did pretty well. That was the Beastie Boys. Connections. Connections breaks my brain uh, sometimes. I guess that's that's the point. You know what? I I appreciate connections because it breaks my brain, but it's not like Tradel where it's like. Oh, I, sorry, I didn't know that this island existed. No disrespect. Well, like, connections is like emergent difficulty. Crescent moon. Waxing moon. Outlet mall. 
mall, <laughs> store, market, let me think about this, socket wrench, Allen wrench, tweeze, cut, wax, and shave, what you do to some body hair. What? Tweeze, cut, shave, wax. That hurts. I don't know what else it could be. Store? <laughs> I guess you could thread, take, share. All right. Piece, share, cut, Take. These are the uh, what you get when you participate in a heist. Store, outlet, market. I want to say mall, but a mall is like a... And this matters sometimes. A mall is a collection of stores, not a single... St okay, what places, places to shop. I should have gone one level of abstraction up. Monkey wrench, something's wrong with me, bro. Thread, wax, tweeze, shave. Thread, ways to, you can, threading hair removes them? It was an easy one today. It does, you can thread your eyebrows. I've never heard of threading, but uh, that's why you solve an easier one first, I guess. That's because you are male? Oh, sorry. <laughs> don't know what you want me to do about it. Like, I also, my eyebrows, like, I don't know what we're doing here. They broke the mold on the eyebrows and the eyelashes. These are, this, disaster. Body, complete disaster when it comes to hair. But the eyebrows and the, the eyelashes, they did a great job in the, in the bakery on that one. What are you talking about? I'm saying I got pretty eyelashes, bro. Okay, let's try not to... Whoa, whoa, I, I need your help. What is... Oh, in, when there's a, the Friday crossword, the letters in the circles become jumbles, right? You can unscramble them. Pop. Main focus in season five of The Crown. The Queen. <laughs> Diana. Thunderstuck band. Thunderstuck. I, listen, this or that. This or this. Pop. Dat. I'm losing it here. Okay, the national language of Pakistan. Can I get flipped on this one? It's Urdu. City in upstate New York is Utica. All of them lead to Rome. Rhodes. Judy in the Bond films. Red, white, and blue in its. USA. Dine or dash. Okay. They're both dashes. Uh, <laughs> very clever. Can you do the real crossword? No, it takes like 40 minutes. New York Times is full of eggheads, so it'll always be like, this Secretary of State in 1811, or the sound you make when you stub your toe in a blender. And then you've got to look it up, and it's like, oh, there was a guy named Bill Youch. So do I, do I have to unscramble these? Is that what's going on with the circles? No, it just says tic-tac-toe. They think they're so smart.
One of these days we'll find out how smart they are. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Coscoto brought hands today. Shark Performance Ultralight Corded Stick Vacuum with Duo Clean. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, Shark, I think, is like a... It's a mid-priced vacuum cleaner. And this dude is corded. It doesn't even have like one of those tanks that generates a tornado. So I think this is actually going to be on the cheaper side. I remember I bought a Dirt Devil vacuum in 2013 from Walmart. And it was $18.99. We're going to apply in, uh, inflation to that, and we're going to assume that, I mean, this is performance, not range, so we're going to maybe amp up the price another few percent, but I would be surprised if this was more than $59.99. Let's start there. $89.99. $199.99? All right. Well, we got it, but I'm not proud of myself. I only know groceries, man. I don't know. We had the same vacuum cleaner for like eight years. What vacuum do you use now? It's the Dyson cordless one. Dyson, yeah, there you, Dyson stick vac. It was like eight people predicted it. No way that thing's like 200 bucks. I don't know. It was, I bought it in 2015. I don't remember how much it cost. Or were you like 14 years old when that happened? Would you recommend it? I don't know. It sucks up the dirt pretty well and it's been running for almost a decade. It mounts on your wall, which means it has a space-saving profile. And it's cordless, which means you, could, you just get one of them and you kind of like pick it up and take it upstairs. I know you can take like a heavy good vacuum upstairs, but this shit is like annoying. You're probably going to vacuum less as a result of how annoying it is. But the vacuum guy on Reddit told me that after Dyson, oh, shut the fuck up, dude. That guy's not real. You're not real. I'm not real. None of this shit is real. Okay. Man was not meant to know that much about vacuum cleaners. You just pick one and stick with it, okay? If it works for you, great. If it doesn't... Grandma was okay with the dirt devil. That's all I'm saying. I'm a shark man. I just couldn't believe a corded vacuum with no tank was $200. I thought those were all like, when I say shitty, I don't mean like that you can't use it. I just mean like, I thought you kind of want like one little vacuum that's like for, for tiny messes. And then you want one freaking huge like bicentennial man vacuum that's like when you really need to clean the place, you plug it into the wall. And as soon as you turn it on, your lights dim like... You got one for like every day, sort of like the kid knocks some Cheerios off the dining room table. And then you've got one for like, we're going to clean this fucker. Twenty. I after I get off the Peloton. I'm not getting enough sugar into my brain for like an hour and a half. I can't talk. I was going to call this 2006. <laughs> October 20th, 2006. I was in my first year of university. I had been on campus for six weeks. I wasn't going to the movies, but that doesn't mean I wasn't following them. Touchstone, Christian Bale, 2006. It's post Batman Begins. It's post The Machinist. That's tough for me. Drama missed. Oh, it's The Prestige. Okay. Fair enough. The Prestige. It's crazy. Chris Nolan, he, he didn't have the... The word wasn't out on Chris Nolan yet. Even though he did Batman, they got him coming out with the prestige in October. Nowadays, that shit would be dropping Memorial Day weekend, without a doubt. Open to 14 million as well. That's crazy. 
Warner Brothers. Third week, 76 million. A crime drama thriller starring Jack Nicholson. Shouldn't have even looked at the, the department. Shouldn't have even looked at the cast. Wasn't necessary. The Departed. No joke. Real. What is it, honey? You found a possum. I watched this in uh, the dorms with like eight other people. And I remember when the, all this stuff happens at the end, one of the girls legit hit us with a, well, that just happened. Like, what was the point of watching the whole movie when that's going to happen at the end? Some people can't appreciate true cinema. I mean, she was like 17, I guess. I'll cut her some slack. I'm going to judge her like literally 17 years later for the fact that, for something she said offhand. But anyway, hope she's doing great if she's watching out there. What are you talking about, the vacuum cleaner? She's going crazy up there. Open to 10 milli, starring Ryan Philippe. This is a problem. Starring Ryan Philippe. Philippe. Tagline. They fight for their country, but they die for their friends. Jesse Bradford. That's the main actor from Clock Stoppers. Let's just reveal all hints on this one. By Clint Eastwood. Okay. Oh! Why, what's up with the... This is um, Flags of Our Fathers. It's a good movie. Not as good as uh, Flags of Iwo Jima. Not as good as that one. I didn't know the cast was so cooked, though. Are you okay, honey? She's okay. Sony Pictures, 70 million. Holding steady at the box office. <laughs> Do you want to come downstairs? Do you want to come down and say hi? Just make sure you hold the railing, okay? It's so funny. Martin Lawrence, 2006. All for one, one for all. It's an animated film. I have no idea who Martin Lawrence was in the animated movies. No. Hi, honey. Hi. You, here, come sit on my lap. I'm so funny. I'm so funny. Are you funny? I try to be. Let's play upstairs. When I'm done with work, let's play upstairs? Yeah. Okay, that sounds good to me. Do you want to say hi? Hi! <laughs> Hello. Hello. Boog, a domesticated 900-pound grizzly bear, finds himself stranded in the woods three days before open season. Holy cow, how many open seasons did they make? 20th Century Fox opened a 7 milli. Is this starring Zach Braff? Allison Lohman, 2006, post Matchstick Men, pre Drag Me to HE Double Hockey Sticks. A family drama. The biggest dreams take the most courage. I just don't know it. Starring Tim McGraw. Katie McLaughlin decides to work on her family's mountainside horse ranch, although her father insists she finish boarding school. Katie finds a Mustang in the hills near her ranch. The headstrong 16-year-old then sets her mind to tame a Mustang and prove to her father she can run the ranch. But when tragedy happens, it will take all the love and strength the family can muster <laughs> to restore hope. This movie was called Mustang. Mustang. Mustang? Is it a kind of horse or a kind of car? This, I, I'm just going to give up on this one. I, w there's no shot you ever would have seen me guess Flicka. There is a 0% a chance that one's, I don't think I've ever heard of it, and it has very little to do with the context, because I'm assuming it's the name of the horse. <laughs> Stop it. Stop what? 
Stop talking? What? I got to talk. That's my work. Based, based, based. Do you see this? Do you see Flicka? Yeah. What's she riding? I don't know. Take a guess. I you take a guess. Me take, I know what it is. You take a guess. No, you. You take a guess. What kind of animals do you ride on? Horse. Horse. Good answer. It is a horse. How about, what animal is this? Bear. Bear. How about this? It does look like a giraffe. Animation wasn't that good in 2006. There's a deer. How about this? A skunk. That's a skunk. Yeah. And then this on the log? Uh, who is he? You see him right here? Yeah. And who is he? That's a bunny. And then on top of the log, who's this? A beaver. A beaver. And who's flying in the air? What kind of bird is it? <coughs> Bless you. A tweedle bird. A tweedle bird? Yeah. This isn't my singing monsters. I'll have to use bathroom. Oh, it's okay. She just came down here and she said, you're so funny. And then like a minute later, she went, stop that. And I said, stop what? And she says, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> here you go, honey. <laughs> Go have some fun with mommy, okay? Yeah. Daddy's gonna do some more talking. Come on, I'm just sit. You wanna sit with me? Yeah. You can sit with me for a minute. I like to sit with you. Go away. No, hey, don't tell mommy to go away. I like to play with daddy. That's not nice. Well, I'm gonna be honest, there's no shot we're doing Sine 2 Nurdle with her on my lap. There's also a very small chance that we're gonna get movie to movie done because I can't see my keyboard. Can. You can? <laughs> All right, can you type uh, Peter Dinklage in? Don't actually type anything. <laughs> I should. <laughs> here, let's go. Here, here. Go with mommy. mommy. I'll see you when I'm done work, okay? Come to mommy. We'll have some fun. You're going to have more fun with mommy, remember? Aren't you going to go to the store? Didn't you want to get a pink fuzzball? No, but Oh, you need a jacket because it's cold outside, right? Okay, say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> I was laughing because uh, we were talking in the Peloton Discord about how, like, oh, I, I said, like, you have to go really hard on your FTP test. And then someone said, yeah, no problem. I'll just tell my toddler that I'm too sore to play tag later. And I say, you know how it is. You just have to play tag anyway. And then I relayed an anecdote from when I was hanging out with her last night. I'm like so tired. And she's like, let's go lay on the bed. And then we go to my bedroom. She lays on the bed. I lay next to her and she says, the, the bed is for girls only. And I say, okay, what should daddy do? And then she says, um, you can jump up and down on the floor. <laughs> okay, honey. <laughs> it was like one eye, like 80% closed. She's not even looking. She's got like the blanket over her head. If you stop, she's like, why'd you stop? And you're like, oh. Sine 2 Nurdle. Now we can do Sine 2 Nurdle. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to be honest with you. Sine 2 Nurdle takes a lot of brain power. <laughs> I'm going to pass. I'm going to cut it because I, I, I did the YouTube slicing of the Twitch VOD from yesterday. And I was like, this one hour and 40 minutes of the dulls cannot stand, bro. It can't stand. I got to I got to pick and mix every single day cuz an hour and 40 minutes is just it's a little bit too much. It doesn't help when you spend 10 minutes just looking at a picture of Ed Holmes, but
This is Chrono Photo. This is like extremely 2000, 2000s coded. Like, look at how thick this boy is. This laptop is like four inches thick, bro. Look at the screen. There was a weird era of like curved square screens. <laughs> what do they got in this? Man, I know they got a barcode scanner. You know what this is? This is a school. This is probably how they check out computer lab equipment is via this scanner. At my school, we had an old lady with a three ring binder. But at this school, they've got like some electronics wired into the damn system. By the way, no smoking in the computer lab, kids. No smoking in the computer lab. But then look at this TV, bro. How are the kids at the back supposed to see all this thing? Oh, man. I'm going to say this is... It's freaking me out, too. This kid's really allowed to wear a hat in class. What's next? Go to the bathroom whenever he wants? Like, I thought there, there used to be standards when I went to school. I think this is 2006. It just has like a like a 05 to 07 sort of vibe to it. Like the lighting is so 05, 07. 2009? Bro, come on. What are we doing? What are we teaching these kids, man? It's also crazy to think that what are we teaching these kids, dude? All, all these kids, like, let's assume they're like nine right now. They're 23 now. <laughs> Horrible funding for this to be 2009. What are you talking about, man? They all got laptops. They got a barcode scan. Okay, the TV. I'll give you the TV. I mean, I wasn't in school, in high school in 2009. I was in high school in 2006. Our shit was way more decoded than this. Each one of these laptops probably got billed out to the taxpayer at like $3,000. Holy bro. If you look like this, DM me. <laughs> oh, man. Hi, Tomo. Um, I mean, I got to feel like this is in the 1920s, 1911, basically the 19. What the hell is this, bro? It's before TikTok existed. Just w one weird kid on your block, have him strap on a helmet made of old jog straps and run into the side of your house. This pick does go kind of hard. He's, I don't, I, you can reverse engineer like the physics on this. He looks like he's freaking zooming, man. Like, look at that form. I'm going to guess this is 1922. 1912. Basically 1920s. This is uh, Franz Ferdinand, also known as Michael Caine. I should get a microphone that looks like this, dude. Wait, no, 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 no. It's not Franz Ferdinand. This is uh, the, the king who abdicated. To marry Wallace and Fortuna. Wallace Simpson? What's her name? I've seen the movie. So that was in like 1932 or something. I'll take that. I'm guilty of always being a little bit ahead of the times. Shh. 1985? I, I was going to guess 1984 for the joke, but... Not bad. Not great, but not bad. We were at least like within a decade most of the time. You know they had to hit him with one today. Did you see the photo of um, Henry Kissinger and Obama that's been resurfacing since the death of Henry Kissinger? Where the dude is like built like the co-op robot from Portal 2. It's literally just like a huge head on a sphere and then two sticks coming out of it. It is, he, he had mind-boggling proportions. 
troll face in the back. I don't want to insult anybody in this photo. If they're still alive, they could probably drone strike my house. But so it is. It's Richard Nixon, um, and it's Henry Kissinger, and then like the most obvious Secret Service agent of all time. But maybe that's what they're going for. And then the buildings look orthodox. Did Richard Nixon ever go to the Soviet Union proper? I'm going to assume they had to, you know? They had icy relations, but they still had to visit from time to time, unless this is possibly in Ukraine or Belarus or... I don't know. I'm going to say this is Moscow. In, and Nixon was like in the 70s. I think Jimmy Carter was like 70, while Reagan was 82, which means Jimmy Carter was 78, which means Gerald Ford was like two years in the middle there, 70s. So Richard Nixon, let's go 1972. It was 1972 in Moscow. Okay, we'll take that. Hi, Tomo. Hi, buddy. Holy. <laughs> uh, this is England. Let's just call this London. And this is like 1996. It's 1992. A group of boys walking nearby and field football grounds minutes after kickoff. The 90s kind of go hard, man. I, I think I had every single piece of clothing on display here. I definitely had some lime green track pants. I definitely had like a baseball style zip up. I don't know if I ever tucked in my big country sweatshirt into my track pants, but, <laughs> but this kid, dude, I mean, this, the nylon jacket with the lollipop is quite a look for uh, like a nine-year-old kid. And then the dude in the full set track suit, look at this, dude, look, he's stanced up. This, I feel just seeing this makes me think this is Australia. And then I see that this is called chemist. So I'm just going to take a stab at this. Australia oftentimes can trip you up. I'm going to say this is Sydney, Australia, circa, this looks like 1977 to me. It is Sydney, Australia, 1981. We take those. Barbie movie in Japan, circa, I mean, this is summer 2023. The only question is where in Japan is this? I can't read Japanese, but this looks like a JR rail station. Oh, Shinjuku station. Well, well, well. Where's Japan? There it is. So you got, you zoom in here, you got your Shinjuku's, excuse me, I see Shibuya, where's my Shinjuku, please? Shinjuku station. Shinjuku's, I thought it was kind of close to Shibuya, it is. Shinjuku, and then where's my JR rail station? I'm not going to worry about it all that much. Let's say it's right there. And I guess you could just look where all the train lines intersect. But Apple Maps does something like I'm not used to looking at the, the train lines in the Apple Maps format. This is Higashi Shinjuku. There's got to be like a, a Shinjuku proper. But you know what? Whatever. Let's put me, put me down right here. Niagara Falls? They got Niagara Falls. Uh, resident sleeper. Niagara Falls, Shinjuku, Tokyo, Japan. Bad chest. People walking past a billboard for the Barbie movie in Tokyo. 
I guess the around the plethora of train tracks makes a lot of sense. Juliet, this is France, I'm assuming. Look at her, she's so crazy. July 1830. I'm going to say France. This is it. What is this? What is this guy doing, David Blaine? Or is this Louisiana? Is this like Mardi Gras? 97, 98, 99? Because like these Capris are screaming. Some of this, these fits are screaming like American college students. 2007, 2008. I'm going to, I think I'm going to pull it back a little bit. I'm going to say this is French America. This is New Orleans, 2008. Also known as... Paris, 1999. <laughs> All right, well, we overthought it a little bit. We overcooked it. Hey, still crossed 40,000, though. It looks so un American. I don't know. It kind of looked like a little, it looked a little American to me. Dude in a backwards hat and a flannel shirt, khaki shorts. Shithouse drunk on Natty Light, climbing on top of, like, a statue. That's America, baby. It's Canada, too. You'd be shot if you climbed a statue in New Orleans. Not in 1999. They'd make you the damn president. Movie grid. See, this is throwing me. Margot Robbie, Domino Gleason is throwing me. Were they both in, in time or about time, whatever it's called? Let's let's be smart. Margot Robbie action. Let's call this uh, the emancipation of one Harley Quinn. And then Margot Robbie, 2010 to 2023. We'll just go big short on that one. I'm sure it's, it's not as clever as I think it is. But now Alicia Vikander, Domino Gleason. That's a gimme. We're going to go uh, Ex Machina. Apollo, did you ever see? You might be live now. Did you ever see Ex Machina? I know that that was like when you made that uh, prompt that was like, an alien is going to blow up the earth if they don't like the movie you recommend. What do you recommend? This was like one of the top recommended movies. And I plus two that. Ex Machina, great movie. Alicia Vikander, action, Tomb Raider. Alicia Vikander, 2010 to 2023. This requires me to know a third Alicia Vikander movie. And it's going to be the girl who kicked the hornet's nest because it has to... This came out in like 2008. Oh, the girl texted me the frick back. Not as smart as I thought I am. Okay. Leonardo DiCaprio, genre action. Leonardo DiCaprio, 2010 to 2023. Okay. Action movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Let's go The Man in the Iron Mask. And then 2010 to 2020. I mean, you could go anything. Let's give some props to Marty. Leonardo DiCaprio, Domino Gleason is throwing me though, man. I love Domino Gleason. I got nothing against Domino Gleason. I just don't know shit that he's been in with Margot Robbie and Leonardo DiCaprio, bro. Like Leonardo DiCaprio has only been in like eight movies since Domino Gleason has been alive. So is it Shutter Island? Is it Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Is it 
it's like the most American movie of all time. And Domhnall Gleeson is like the most Scottish man in history. Like it's a, it's a tough bet on that one. That's just the nerd. Is it was the Revenant? Maybe he's in the. Wouldn't be. It doesn't make sense for him to be in the Revenant. So what was Domhnall Gleeson and Margot Robbie in together? Margot Robbie's been in. Oh, wait, wait, but Margot Robbie and 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 Leonardo DiCaprio were both in the Wolf of Wall Street, which makes me think the Wolf of Wall Street maybe applies to either. Let's put it right here. No, nope. all right. <laughs> Let me let me see some results. We were in the top half. About he was in a she was in about time. I didn't know Margot Robbie was in about time. I barely even remember the name of the movie. He was in the Revenant. The Danish girl. The Danish girl texted me the frick back. You said it. What's crazy is I've seen the Revenant and I do not remember Domino Gleason in the movie. I liked the movie, too. I'm not one of those... I mean, was it a pity Oscar? Maybe. But the, I thought the movie was pretty good. But I don't remember Domino Gleeson. I don't remember much, honestly. I remember the bear. I remember the phlegm coming out of Leonardo DiCaprio's mouth. He played the snow. Actually, didn't he play... I was going to say, didn't he play General Snow in Star Wars? And I realize I'm confusing Star Wars and Hunger Games. <laughs> President Snow and General Hux and... Okay, don't leave. Let's, let's take a peek at Puck Doku. Nah, I just can't be fricked today. All right, slash marker.